Okay, here's just where I'm checking the crankshaft for size. I've got a micrometer and I'm checking the main bearing journal. I've already done all the rods. Didn't videotape that, so I just got those camera. But you check the size. Let's see if I can show you this here. Um, you, if you don't know how to read a micrometer, I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on that or not. But anyway, I checked that for size. And I've written down what each of the main journals are for size. Now, I'm gonna take this micrometer and use it to set my dial bore gauge to zero. Then I'm gonna use my dial bore gauge in the block that is torqued down and the difference between this measurement and the measurement that's in the bearing is gonna be what's called my oil clearance. Now, because each of these journals varies a tenth or two in size, depending on uh, how it falls in, just from throwing the bearing shells in the block like I did, um, I might be taking a bearing shell out I'll measure it for thickness because they vary a few tenths between each one even though it's a what everybody calls a 10 under bearing or 10 over bearing for because this crank was turned 10 thousandths of an inch down to true it up so uh, for a stock style engine that I wouldn't even need to check this uh, I'm just showing you how it would be done if you were doing like a race engine. I just do all my engines this way because I'm real, I just, there's no reason why I, I can't do it perfect because I've got this equipment to do it. But uh, the average guy could trust his machine shop to turn the crank correctly and just throw in a set of bearings and you might have one that's a few tenths or a half a thou tighter than another one but it's gonna run just fine I mean really I just try to make mine where they're all the same so let's just say that this number four ends up being a couple tenths tighter than number one if I take those shells out and I notice that these shells are a couple tenths thicker, which would in turn make this oil clearance tighter, then I could swap one or both of these thicker shells with the shells that are in number one, and then my oil clearance would be identical by swapping those shells out. Now, just so if you know much about uh, micrometers, dial bore gauges, dial calipers, whatever, the machinist measuring tools, one of the hairs on your head is usually about two thousandths of an inch. The oil clearances on the rods I always try to get, you know, two thousands to two thou and four tenths. The mains, I usually try to go at least two and a half to three, maybe a little bit more on this number five because this is where the oil pump is. So this is kind of where a little bit more might have to happen. So most crankshafts, and this one included, it's actually a few tenths small just in the way it's ground to allow for a little heavier oil clearance here. Um, but these other four that are all the, the same type of bearing shell, um, you'll notice this one has, it's a different bearing shell because it's got the thrust uh, flanges on it, which 
rides inside here to for the crank to go back and forth the thrust and I usually try to set that at about five thousandths um, anyway I'll get into that later so just so you know how accurate these oil clearances are imagine the thickness on one of the hairs on your head if that were two thousandths slice that into 20 pieces and then you'll see how much of a tenth of a thousandth is and i just try to make this that perfect um like i say it doesn't need to be it can be within a thou or so some people use what's called plastic gauge they put the crank in the block put a strip of uh, small like plastic thread almost down and torque the main cap down take the main cap back off and however tight it smushed that plastic thread out you can kind of measure that thickness the fatter it is obviously the tighter that oil clearance would be you can check it that way um, but if you've got if you don't have these um, micrometers and the outboard gauge you know you can easily wrap up a thousand bucks or so just in this stuff I've had mine for, I don't know, 25 or 30 years. So I built 100 engines with them. They're, I don't know, they maybe they paid for themselves in my mind, but if you're only gonna be doing one engine, you probably don't need to invest in it, but maybe you've got a machinist buddy or something that can come over and uh, help you with it uh, or do it for you. Anyway. Uh, I'll show you more with the Dell bore gauge once I get that set on the engine block.